One of the questions that pop up the most in my YouTube comments is what is the difference between a Distress Ink and a Distress Oxide, especially since I've been doing the Distress Oxide colour combination video series. So there are lots of identical properties with these but there are also some different properties and they are going to affect the way your crafting looks. So let's take a look at exactly how each ink and oxide is made up and what you can be doing with them. Now if you like this video please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your crafty friends. So first of all let's look at the makeup of each pad. Now both the inks and the oxides come in these three inch square pads and at the moment the inks also come in one inch square pads and you can often buy those in multi packs of four as well. So this is a really good way if you're just starting with Distress Inks and Oxides to start with the small cubes and have a play but you're not able to yet get the uh, small cubes in the oxides. So each one has a lovely felt pad. This just means that you've got a really nice firm surface for you to be pressing your stamps against or of course your blending brushes and your blending foams. Now instantly as soon as I take the lids off of the oxides and the inks you can see the difference in the colour and you notice that there's more of a cloudy effect to the oxides. So Distress Ink at the top here and I've got Picked Raspberry and Speckled Egg just as examples for you. The Distress Ink is a dye based ink. So this is uh, almost if you imagine it's a little bit thinner, uh, more of a liquid in colour. Okay. So that's the best way I can explain it. Now the Distress Oxides at the bottom here, these are pigment based but they also have some dye in as well. So they're kind of like the inks but with pigment added. Now the way I uh, best explain or best understand dye and pigment, if you imagine them soaking into um, some paper now, a dye being more kind of more watery I suppose, would soak into the paper. If you imagine having a sponge, putting water on it, it's going to soak in. Now, when you add the pigment, imagine adding some sort of powder to that water as such. If you put the powdered water onto the sponge, some's going to soak in, but you're going to get this film, some of it left on top of the sponge that won't soak in. Hopefully, that kind of explains when you apply a dye ink or a pigment and dye a little bit oxide to paper how it either soaks into the paper or sits on the surface. This is going to help you a lot when you're blending and I'll cover that a little bit later in the video. Now another thing to note is that dye it has a slight translucency to it as well so although you get the colour nice and bright particularly on white cardstock you're not going to see it so much on a dark cardstock so let's explain that in visual for you. So here we go I've got uh, picked raspberry and this is my distress ink and I'm just going to put this onto some white cardstock just by swiping it. Now look how beautifully bright that colour is. Okay, really true to the colour of the label as well. Now that is soaking into the cardstock but because the cardstock is a nice bright white we can clearly see all of that lovely dye based colour. Now let's bring that to black cardstock instead and let's give this a swipe in exactly the same way. Now you can see that there's ink on there and you can see that it's wet but you really can't see the colour anywhere near as much. This is because it has that translucency. Now let's do exactly the same with an oxide. So if I just pop those to the top for a moment and let's swipe our same colour picked raspberry oxide onto white cardstock. Now again not so much difference. Let's take a look at the ink and the oxide you can clearly see the colour. Because of the pigment you get a little more of a cloudy effect uh, where it's sitting on the surface of the oxide but not too much difference. You may wonder why you'd need oxides and inks in your craft stash. So then let's put the oxide onto black cardstock. Okay just another swipe. Look at the difference. 
there we go that is those pigments kind of sitting on the surface pigments are not translucent they are opaque they are nice solid color that you're going to see on top of dark colors so these are the inks these are the oxides now obviously the inks were the first out in the distress range before the oxides were then developed so uh, inks were absolutely fabulous but we'd have to do things like uh, um, colored embossing powder and such to get color onto dark cardstock and now with oxides we don't need to now both distress inks and distress oxides can be stamped really nicely and they can be heat embossed they both stay wet long enough for you to add your embossing powder so i'm just going to stamp here first of all with an ink now i kind of consider that an ink is slightly thinner so because it's a thinner kind of dye based liquid i feel like sometimes it pulls a little bit on the stamp surface just a little bit so occasionally your image might not be quite as clear as you'd like but you also then get the soaking into the paper still absolutely possible but i always feel and this is my personal opinion if you'd like a really clear image from your stamped distress ink or oxide i would go with an oxide just because i find that because of the pigment kind of holds itself together a little bit better on the stamp rather than pooling as in when the water hits the uh, resistant surface and let's just stamp this and show you the difference it is minute let me lift those up for you but i just feel that the oxide has a slightly clearer detail image there now ink blending is one of the main things that people will uh, go to distress inks or distress oxides for and you can absolutely blend both inks and oxides absolutely beautifully so i'm just popping some uh, distress ink onto the end of my cardstock here this is just plain white cardstock and it's soaking into the surface because of this and because of the cardstock that i've chosen which was just randomly grabbed from my scraps box I can start to see some of the texture in the cardstock there where it's soaking in. So I do have to be very careful when I'm blending any sort of distress ink onto cardstock. It needs to be ideally something like a watercolor cardstock or a mixed media cardstock is ideal. When you have white stamping or white super smooth cardstock, you can really start to see some of the fibers where it's not absorbed necessarily evenly. So let's then move to uh, blending with Distress Oxide now. This is where things have really changed up because I feel that blending with Distress Oxides is a lot, lot easier with Oxides. And this is going back to the beginning where we said, well, the color kind of sits on the surface rather than soaking in. So take a look at the difference there. Look how much smoother the oxide is. Now the ink being the dye based ink has soaked into the cardstock. And again, it's got that translucency to it, but of course on white cardstock, we're not going to see that thankfully. We can see all that beautiful color. Now with the oxide, a little bit of the, the dye content has soaked into the cardstock, but the pigments have all sat on the surface there looking gorgeous nice and perfectly smooth it kind of reminds me of putting a really good foundation on your face and it sits on the surface um, whereas like a moisturizer or tinted moisturizer moisturizer will just soak in and still show lots of the uh, lumps and bumps it's kind of how i see distress inks and oxides now when it then comes to ink blending two colors together of course this is going to be so much easier to blend in two colors because that color is sitting on the surface it does stay wet longer as well as soon as that ink has soaked into the cardstock um, you're not going to be able to blend it quite as easily and you'll need to reapply more on top to get that blended look with the oxides while it's sitting there and still damp really really easy to blend and this is why i've chosen to do my distress oxide blending series rather than distress ink now one of the cool things about distress oxides in particular 
is the way that it oxidizes when it comes into contact with water. Now you may have heard me say lots of times in my previous videos that just the distress range react with water so be really careful that your mat is not damp, your project, your paper is not damp before you apply it and I'm going to show you exactly what happens when you do apply water because it is such a cool technique that you're going to want to purposely use. So let's first of all let's swipe some uh, distress ink onto some cardstock here. Now this is going onto a watercolour cardstock so it's got a lot more texture in it and I've chosen to go with a darker colour here. I'm using a blueprint sketch for both my ink and oxide and this is just because I feel this technique with the water does work much better on um, darker colours. It will work on the lighter colours but for you to be able to see it in the video, it's going to work better with the darker. Okay, so just cleaning my mat up there. So I have got my ink and my oxide there. Now already you can kind of see, uh, the again, the, oh, the dye there soaking into the cardstock a little bit. Nice and bright though on the white or pale colour cardstock. And we've got the uh, oxide here with those gorgeous pigments kind of sitting on top. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just spritz a little bit of water on my mat here and just show you what happens when you use water in, on these inks, even if they're dry. So let's come down to the bottom here and I can literally make these into a watercolour. Even though this is soaked into the paper, I can pull and blend this out really nicely and easily there. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. So you can really create your own watercolour paint. Now let's clean this up get some fresh water and just show you exactly the same on the oxides as well. So you can see there straight away that gorgeous oxidization with the water but we're able to move around the ink to use it pretty much as a watercolour if we want for a nice solid colour. You can do things like watered down colouring then as well. Perfect for adding colour to your stamped images providing you use the correct base outline ink and this needs to be a waterproof one. So not only can you use them as a watercolour paint, if I just splat some inks, some water, sorry, onto these like so, straight away you're going to start to see a reaction, particularly on the oxides. Now this is just a wonderful, wonderful effect to give you distressed effects, um, lots of texture as well, and it takes seconds, it really does. So. I have actually put some water also where I've already done the watercolour blending to show you you can keep reactivating these inks and oxides. Now I'm going to just place this over the top. You can see that's kind of reactivated so that the ink is coming through the cardstock and take a look at those effects. We've got some beautiful water effects. Now here it's kind of almost bleached, lifted the colour out where it's reacted with the ink. With the oxide, rather than lifting the colour, we get this oxidisation. So we get this cloudy, almost chalky effect. There isn't any chalk in oxide, so don't worry about that. But you get this cloudiness, and that's that oxidisation that happens as soon as the water hits the surface. So just imagine the fun techniques that you're going to be able to play with when you start mixing water with either your inks or your oxides. So I hope you found this video useful. Please do give me a thumbs up if you have and leave me a comment if you have any other questions and I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel. If you love the look of Distress Inks and Oxides, don't forget to check out the playlist here that's going to take you through each of the individual Distress Oxide colours we're working through alphabetically, looking at the oxide colour, looking how it compares with others in the range because there are 70, I think there's 70, 71 at the moment, uh, and seeing um, what you can be blending them into, so lots of other colour combinations with them too. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you again very soon.